Hello, and welcome to the Gaia update for the new moon in Aquarius that happens on January 24th, 2020. I'm Adrienne Elise. So this new moon is powerful for a number of reasons. First of all, it happens at four degrees Aquarius, which is exactly one sign over. It's exactly uh, one sign from where that incredibly potent total solar eclipse happened on December 26th. So we know that this is a continuation of that eclipse season. And indeed, it isn't until the lunation after the last eclipse that the eclipse season completes. So here we are at this new moon in Aquarius telling us on so many levels that it is time to move in to this new paradigm. So um, what's happening around this new moon is a completion in a way, although eclipse energies continue to affect us for six months until the next eclipse season. Uh, but this new moon is kind of bringing us out of the fog and the confusion of this time that we've been in and orienting us towards the future. And what is that all about? So January 2020 has some of the most epic astrology of our lifetimes with Saturn and Pluto conjunct at they were there conjunct for eight days together at 22 degrees, took six days off, and then just leading up into this new moon, come back together at 23 degrees for three days um, from the 20th to the 22nd. So Saturn and Pluto conjunction together makes this eclipse season in this time that we're in and this shift of ages everything on the table right now intensity saturn and pluto coming together means that it's time for historical generational change and change to our relationship to our physical manifested world in capricorn and the systems of our world and our systems of authority giving us opportunities to take our power back so that we can build this new world and this new paradigm. And a lot of this has to do with moving into the Aquarian age. At the end of 2020, Jupiter, now part of the reason that the Saturn-Pluto conjunction is so intense is that Jupiter will be also joining these planets throughout the year activating and reactivating, bringing opportunities, and hopefully perhaps some clarity about what this Saturn-Pluto conjunction is really about in wider, bigger terms, as well as what it means in our individual life as that Saturn-Pluto conjunction from the 7th to the 14th of January happened right next to the Sun and Mercury, our everyday reality. You know, so it's like big changes to our reality that are hitting home into our everyday reality. And yes, we are trying to move into a new paradigm. We're trying to move into a new age. And at the end of 2020 in December and January, Saturn and Jupiter together move over into the sign of Aquarius saying, yes, it's time. And we are preparing for that, learning about that and figuring out what do we need to let go of and what do we need to embrace as we move, try to move into this future. And that's a lot of what this new moon in Aquarius is about. New moons are always a new beginning of a cycle of the lunation cycle of the month. You know, it's a good time to set intentions and to kind of reset your energy and that kind of thing. But the new moon in Aquarius is always a reset for the whole year because it marks the beginning of the Chinese uh, new year. So the day after the new moon in Aquarius is the official Chinese new year each year. So today, this year, January 25th, we're moving into the year of the rat. But the year of the rat is the first sign of the Chinese zodiac of this 12 year Chinese zodiac. So it's a beginning of a 12 year cycle in Chinese astrology. And of course, a beginning of the year and a beginning of the <laughs> kind of coming out of that eclipse energy and into this age of Aquarius. So beginning of a new age also. And so we're here at the precipice of this and the astrology of this new moon in Aquarius can tell us 
a little bit about what we're getting ourselves into here and what's really going on. So the main energy, of course, leading up to this new moon is that Saturn Pluto conjunction. Now the three days that they come together from the 20th to the 22nd is really informing this new moon energy. And that's at 23 degrees Capricorn. Now two and three, if you add that up in numerology makes five. And five is a number of like putting a spoke on the wheel, starting to move energy in a new direction. And so that is another indication that it's time to get this ball rolling, right? We've been like trying to clean up the past so stuck in between the past and the future, all the astrology of the last couple of years have felt like that. And of course, the last couple of decades, and we've been talking about this epic harmonic convergence in the 2012 and all these things that are supposed to bring these new energies, which they are, but they're invisible, they're behind the scenes. Those of us who are sensitive are definitely feeling it, and yet we're not seeing the actual evidence in our everyday world. And I think that that is part of the shift that we're seeing. That's what this Saturn-Pluto conjunction is really about, is uh, that it's time to actually adjust our physical material world in according to these changes that have been happening over the last few decades. So um, the What's going on here, um, because this eclipse happens in that four degree place, which is where that incredibly powerful solar eclipse happened. And during that time, we had a really powerful lining up of geometry in the planets of like one after another, exactly one sign or two signs apart and all the planets were involved. And it's like a grid, a new grid, a new vibration, you know, and it makes me think of the Christ consciousness grid, trying to land into our everyday life here, trying to inf infuse this planet and our reality with these new higher vibrational frequencies. So here we are at this new moon in Aquarius exactly in relationship to that point. And that's about working together to figure out solutions, that relationship, that semi sextile, which is 30 degrees apart. And it's telling us that this eclipse season, the Saturn Pluto conjunction, yes, it's all about trying to move into the age of Aquarius. So um, before this, on the 14th of January, Venus moved into Pisces. And so for this new moon, Venus is very close to Neptune um, and just approaching an exact conjunction with Neptune and Venus and Neptune is are making relationship um, aspects, angular relationships with Mars, Jupiter and Mercury. So it's like, okay, here we are, all the planets involved again, okay? Because a new moon means that the sun and the moon are together at that four degrees marker in Aquarius. Then the um, then we've got Venus and Neptune together in Pisces and in relationship to all of our other personal planets. And so it is a personal revolution. You know, Aquarius has an energy of revolutionary change and... Uh, generational change and maybe this is that energy of hitting home and then what is it about so we're looking at this venus is our what we love what we care about what makes us feel good our connection to our feminine side our intuition our um our creativity and our our emotionality our sensitivity and venus represents what we want in love what we love what we care about what makes us feel good and then coming into a conjunction with neptune at the point of this aquarius new moon is a very powerful message for us that we need to pay attention to and it's a great clarification of what it is we need to do to move into the higher octave of this age of aquarius energy and that has to do with taking our personal love, which is the Venus energy, and bringing it into a higher spiritual love, which is that Neptune at home in Pisces. And Neptune in Pisces is this direct connection to the cosmic source energy, to this one 
principle of everything that holds all together. It also rules, though, delusions and confusion because when we try to get that bigger conceptual, that world, that spiritual world that doesn't have a lot of concepts and make sense of it, then we get very, very confused and we can get stuck in delusions. And that's part of why, how we got stuck into the traumas and energies of the Piscean age. But Venus, this lower octave of love, this personal love, connecting with cosmic love is a very important and powerful message for us that the age of Aquarius, the new paradigm, what we're doing here, it's all about this taking our personal love to a higher level. This fits everything we've been talking about with the Saturn-Pluto conjunction trying to take back our power from where we've given it away and authority energies and the paradigm of how these authority control energies keep control of us is keeping us in the dark about our connection to our direct connection to source within our own being, you know, and as long as we feel like that we need to get our energy and what we need in this world and particularly our love in these interpersonal relationships that we need to get that we, what we need, we have to get from an outside source completely negating and invalidating our connection to our own source, to our own connection to the greater, bigger truth, to the oneness, to this unconditional love of the cosmos. So Venus, the goddess, has got, gone through quite a bit, and she's gotten quite a bit of an upgrade. And uh, going over that Venus, uh, going over that galactic center point in November with Jupiter, and being the center point of that beautiful flower of life geometry that happened around the time of that total solar eclipse and the day after Christmas. Um, so Venus is like, she's taking it to another level, especially with this conjunction with Neptune and joining our personal love, what we love, what we care about, what makes us feel good with that universal love. This is the age of Aquarius. And this is the positive new paradigm that we're trying to land here. And the project, the same energy we've been working on throughout time as these advanced souls being on this in this earth evolution. Our greater goals have everything to do with this universal love. And but when we are, are programmed to think that we don't have access to this energy within us, then we're in these power and control dynamics, right? So this like key energy, Venus is like, here's the mystery, you guys, and Neptune together saying, we got to take it up higher love, you know, we got to take it up a notch, we got to go into um, uh, this, a new, this new paradigm requires universal love landing in truth, in our hearts, and full expression in this everyday reality. So um, this Venus-Neptune conjunction is so powerful because of everything that Venus has gone through and what's and the activation that she has experienced. And this is like the fruit of that activation. It's like, okay, here's the initiation, a flood of energy of unconditional universal love into our everyday reality. And of course, it seems like, or what we're being shown is we're going completely the opposite, right? More hatred, more division, more divide and conquer, more like, you know, the other is the enemy, right? And that's all this agenda to try to keep us in this lower paradigm of separation, you know, the delusion of separation. And yet, there's so many incredibly powerful souls on the planet right now that have this connection to this truth, this greater truth of this universal spiritual love and that that's what makes the world go round. I mean, it is the source of everything. It is what makes all form, <laughs> you know, and um, yet we don't have permission to access it. You know, it's like continually invalidated. And it is our power. So Venus is saying, is getting schooled up here and being like, oh, okay. How we take our power back is to incarnate spiritual, unconditional, cosmic, uh, you know, universal love in our heart. So we've got uh, Venus right there with Neptune in Pisces. And then they're in a square 
with Mars and Sagittarius. Now, this is really potent because that Venus Jupiter galactic center activation has not completed yet because it's like it, it kind of started an energy in the, the sun and then Mercury and Jupiter all went, you know, they all took their turns over that spot. And Mars has not yet gone over it. That happens in mid February. And so Mars is still in Sagittarius, kind of preparing for it for this activation. So a very interesting energy in square to Venus and Neptune for this new moon in Aquarius. So squares have tension and it's kind of about a change that needs to be made. In this case, in order to bring down this universal love, we got to get back on our spiritual quest. We've got to claim our purpose. We've got to stand up for who we really are and We've been talking so much about this, about how the further you get on your path towards freedom and into who you really are, the less and less the people around you can validate your experience. And it's really hard. It's super isolating, but it's all about us claiming regardless of what this world tells us about who we are getting back on that horse and claiming back that spiritual quest the whole reason why we went through we've gone through so much to be incarnated as advanced beings into this lower dimensional reality and these beings have been feeling you know this is part of the venus upgrade you know it's like venus rules our self-worth and these these beings trying to bring the light and the love and the healing to this planet for so many lifetime after lifetime and then being beaten down and persecuted and invalidated and gaslit and it's like oh no 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 that's not who you are focus over here focus over here we got a little trauma we got some catastrophe deal with this deal with this everything has been all of the blocking energies which is coming up so much right now with the saturn pluto conjunction it's all about distracting you from your true purpose and why you're here okay and that's the energy of mars and sagittarius because mars is like the warrior our warrior planet it's like come on let's go let's do something let's make it happen in sagittarius it's like we've got to get back on our quest you know and, and it, that takes validating who we really are as spiritual being, beings, which is in directly opposite of all the message we're, we're getting from the people and from the energies and the control energies on the planet. But we have to go within and claim back this. And the souls that I work with, they all have a sense that they're here for something. You know, and then this world says, oh, you just think you're better than us. You know, and you think you're so special. And it's like, this has nothing to do with ego constructs this is a deep soul yearning to come back into who you really are and your purpose the bigger self of who you are which because of the planetary energies hasn't been able to fully incarnate and maybe that's what these times are telling us it's time to land home time to bring that bigger self in and claim who you are and stand up for who you are that chiron and aries energy and so um, that's pretty interesting because the sun and the moon here um, are in a sextile relationship. The sun and the moon in Aquarius for this new moon are in a sextile relationship with Chiron and Aries. And that's creative solutions. So it's like, how do we bring in the new paradigm and bring in this unconditional love? We got to stand up for who we really are. We got to stop taking the stories and the bullshit and the programming and... Um, get up and stand up and stand right and true in who you are in your truth which is beautiful and pure and the world has told you that you're wrong and bad and you did something horrible and you need to be punished and you're you're disgraceful you're worth nothing and it's a, it's actually the complete opposite that's true you are the wealth of this world and that's the uranus and taurus energy that's trying to land and so this is an incredibly, you know, the stars are speaking to us and, and it's time to land home as who we really are. So that's the energy of the Mars and Sagittarius and square to Saturn and um, Neptune in Pisces. But I mean, excuse me, Venus and Neptune and Pisces. So Venus and Neptune and Pisces are in square to Saturn and Sagittarius, but they're also in sextile 
to Jupiter in Capricorn, right where that, you know, not too far away from where that, uh, that eclipse happened, right? And so sextiles are this, so it's, it's really kind of cool because, um, it's that geometry energy, these sextiles, it's like a star building a star. And maybe that's what we are. We're building the star that we are coming into the star that we are, that we need to be in order to do the Aquarian thing right, you know? And that's that, maybe that's landing this love home to the planet and being like, it's more powerful than all of this other crap out there, you know? And stand in that truth of the power of the light and the power of the truth and the power of what's right and good and true, which you've gotten beaten down for in the past, you know? Um, and yet, come on, <laughs> you know, it's like, haven't we done this long enough, you know? So um, this Jupiter is in sextile to Venus and Neptune, and that's a creative solution. And, v and Jupiter and Capricorn is about taking that power back, taking our authority back, and expanding into the truth of why, you know, maybe this is part of what's going on with Jupiter and Capricorn is that a lot of people don't realize they even had power in the first place, much less gave it away, right? So we're kind of waking up to these truths and Jupiter's always brings light and awareness and uh, possibilities. And so lots of possibilities of breaking out of the chains of the lower paradigm and the lower matrix and the game of it. And so in sextile to these planets in uh it actually they're in semi sextile <laughs> yeah is that right no yeah no um yeah so semi sextile let's see i'll look at my notes here okay so yes venus and neptune are in semi sextile i mean are in sextile to jupiter in Capricorn and then semi sextile to Mercury. So one sign over from Mercury and Aquarius. So it's kind of like all lining up and we've got that Mars and then Jupiter and then Mercury in all lining up in, in these, in, in the signs one after another, creating that beautiful geometry again, and all relating back to this higher octave of love energy. And that's the big message. But Mercury is an Aquarius, and so Mercury is our every day today, and so Mercury's getting a huge upgrade. It's like, whoa, okay, wait, is this finally making sense? Like the age of Aquarius, it's a higher love, dropping the chains and all that. The chains have to do with that darker uh, shadow energy that got revealed during that Mercury retrograde in Scorpio, so that's finally coming to resolution. And it is finally an energy, maybe that... Saturn Pluto at 23 being the spoke on the wheel you know it is time to, to get this ball rolling now like let's get this ball rolling and it has to do with standing up for who we are Chiron and Pisces I mean Chiron and Aries landing home this universal cosmic love into our hearts and rearranging our mind towards the Aquarian age which has to do with this universal love and expanding our our awareness in order to break our contracts and take our power back and claim back our quest so this is this beautiful geometry that is being created this new grid that we ourselves are creating when we're willing to drop the chains and bring in this love into our heart so incredibly potent and powerful new moon in aquarius and definitely the messages are uh it is time to to move forward on this project and so all hands on deck let's do this and maybe that's part of that saturn pluto and capricorn energy because capricorn has an energy of hard work like let's get down to it let's get real let's face reality and get some stuff happening right but it's hard work that pays off and so maybe that's a really beautiful image because these souls that I'm speaking to you guys have been through so much and it's been a lot of lifetimes of hard work to get right here right now and it's about time to allow ourselves to land this new energy home and start enjoying the process and get to work on these amazing projects and find each other in our soul group so um I hope you'll consider joining me for this a new moon activation to it's happening. I'm going to do it right at the exact time leading up to this exact time of this new moon. And so that is going to be on Friday, 
January 24th at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. That's 1 p.m. on the West Coast and 4 p.m. on the East Coast. And um, so I hope you'll consider joining. If it doesn't work in your time zone, you can go ahead and catch the replay because the energy of that new moon will be encoded and the messages we need to hear. And it's a guided meditation. So it's just kind of an activation to reset our energy and um, be present with the energies of the time. And wow, they are certainly intense. And it's a great celebration because we will have made it through the exact conjunctions of Saturn and Pluto. And uh, so onward on the journey and on the quest together. So I hope you can see, join me for that live activation on the 24th. I'll see you on the next update. Until then, I'm Adrienne Elise. Namaste.